Father in heaven, for we love you. We lift your name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established in our praises. Father in heaven, how we love. We lift your name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established in our praises. As your people declare your mighty law, blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. whom we have come to worship is enthroned on high. Revelation talks about his throne which is the center of the, the whole of creation. Every creature, everything that the Lord has created bows down to him, the word says. So we as his creatures this evening, let us also bow down and worship him because all, all honor and all glory is deserved only by him. So let's worship this majesty. Let's worship him with all that we have. Majesty. Worship his majesty. Yeah. 
Loving and merciful Father, as we come to you this evening, help us to remember that we are children of the King, the sovereign King over all universe. You deserve our honor, worship, and praise. You alone are the one who is worthy of wearing the crown title of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You alone, O oh Lord, are worthy. And Father, help us to know and remember that as children of the King, it is our responsibility, it's our privilege to be to be known as the sons and daughters of the living King, the living King. But more than that, help us to know that there is a responsibility that comes with this royalty. Responsibility of living according to what the king desires living as your children in this fallen world help us to remember that people look to us to see traces of our father in us to see whether we are truly living responsible lives as Christians help us to live with that knowledge with that understanding to be careful how we live, the words that we speak, the actions that we have. Father, help it all to glorify your name, to exalt you, to tell others to which king we belong to. Help us to live with the testimony. We give you all praise and glory. This evening as we study your word, imply it upon our hearts deeply that we are the children of the living God. We are called to live according to that. May these churches that we are studying, the Lord, be an example for us, be a warning for us. Things that they do well help us to copy. Things that they do in against your will, pray that it will be removed from our lives also. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Right, so welcome back and thank you for joining us for this evening's study from the book of Revelation. As you know, on Tuesday evenings we study the book of Revelation and right now we are actually in the churches, the letters to the churches. And we are spot in the middle of the, of the seven churches, the fourth one, church in Thyatira. Okay, so turn in your Bibles to chapter 2, verses 18 onwards. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira, write, The words of the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire, and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your works, your love and faith and service and patient endurance, that your latter works exceed the first. Okay. So let's stop there and let's study. And then we will continue with the rest of the passage. Okay. First of all, the place, Thyatira. Now, geographically speaking, Thyatira is not a very significant 
city. It is a small city, Chupatanal. And what is the great thing about this city? The great thing about the city is business. Though it's a small city, it is thriving in business. Thriving in business. It is thriving in trade. Now, many of you know, you know, uh, uh, we have these two cities called Trivandrum and Ernago, Cochin and Trivandrum. And uh, Cochin is the business capital of the state and Trivandrum is the political capital of the state, the administrative capital of the state. So, if you look at it, most of the business, now it is changing slowly. Trivandrum is also becoming a hub of business. But earlier, 10 years back, if you looked at the geography of Kerala, you would find that Trivandrum is a, a very sleepy town. Not much of business happens in Trivandrum. People would not set up new industries in the city. But Cochin is a place where if you want to do business, be in Cochin. And Ernakulam is a very big you know, business hub. But it's a big city. You know? If you compare it, my city, where I grew up in Malapram, we have a small city, small town called Manjeri. Malapuram is the capital. Manjeri being a small place, trade was great there. Did people come to Manjeri for business? Even people from Malapuram come to Manjeri for business. A thriving small town. That is what Thai Terra is. It is not geographically big, but the amount of business, amount of trade brings people to that. And there are different unions and different kinds of, you know, uh, different kinds of trade that happens. Uh, for example, you will find in Acts chapter 16 verses 14 and 15 there is a person mentioned there Acts chapter 16 uh, verses 14 and 15 a person called Lydia is mentioned there a woman who has come uh, from Thyatira and her business is uh, purple dye okay a, a, a purple linen is her business you'll find her in verses 14 and 15 of chapter 16. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods, who was a worshipper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul, and after she was baptized and her household as well, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. See, a godly woman, but she's also a businesswoman, and she has come to show us you know, to Philippi. And uh, why? What is she doing in Philippi? She's doing business in Philippi. She is a trader of purple goods. The purple and the parana dye. It is a very costly dye, and all the linen and material that is used from purple, that is made from purple, this dye is only affordable by royalty. Raja can marim, our kudumang matra mele affordiyam batatum. Okay, so it's a very expensive dye. It's an expensive products that are made from purple. And here is a businesswoman, Lydia, who has come to Philippi to trade in that. Okay. So here you understand the Thyatira is a place where they manufacture purple dye. So it shows you just the business of it. Okay. So uh, according to history, if you look at, um, you know, archaeological studies and if you look at um, geographical studies, you will find that it is a very, very small city but it's a center of trade and business. Leaders who had written about this place call it unimportant city. Unimportant city. Why? Because it is so dependent on Pergamum. Pergamum is a big city that is close to Thyatira and Pergamum is not idol worship. Pergamum was a center of idolatry and that was passed on to Thyatira also. Business was good in Pergamum, it was passed on to Thyatira also. Now, another thing that was great, doing great business in Thyatira was brass. Brass work was very much in demand and it was made mostly in Thyatira. Brass, it's one of the uh, costly metals. Anathakalate, ancient world, costliest metals in Omnana, brass. What is the uh, quality of brass? Uh, see, brass is the uh, what do you say? It is the strongest metal of that world. Okay, the strongest metal. And other thiel, chuda ki palpech palpech palichana palichana ne pure akna. Okay, and pure brass is made in Thyatira. Okay, so Thyatira has this name of producing 
quality brass and brass products one of the costliest metals and strongest metals of those days okay so keep in mind these things it will come in our study also uh, purple and uh, you know brass and all those things will come in our study so remember these things so it's a center of business and trade that is Taitera. now what is the significant thing about uh, the introduction to the angel of the church in Taitera, write the words of the son of god who has eyes like a flame of fire whose feet are like burnished bronze bronze or brass okay so son of god first thing he says he jesus christ introduced himself as the son of god now what do you mean by this word by this title son of god devathinte putran nallartham okay now if god is emphasized there and him being the son of god the divine nature or the deity of christ is stressed there okay deity kartavinte mahatva devam ennulla aa vyaktiyude mahatvamana avada kaanikkunnathu so that same nature adhe nature yesu kartavinu undu ennulla so he is the son of god and being the son of god he has the deity of god he is he is uh, supernatural he is god in in nature okay now uh, if you if you say something is a son of something or someone we say that that nature is in that person and kaanikkana na vaakkuvikkunnu udaharanam parayanengil in isaiah chapter 57 and verse 3 isaiah 57 and verse 3 but you draw near sons of the sorceress offspring of the adulterer and the loose woman See, sons of the sorceress which means mantravadiniyude makkalana appo the nature of the sorceress is there in you in the kaanikkana sons of the sorceress nu parayunnu okay now another passage that you will find which is familiar with us is mark chapter 3 gospel of mark chapter 3 and verse 17 mark chapter 3 and verse 17 right here the titles were given to james and john james the son of zebedee and john the brother of james to whom he gave the name boanerges that is sons of thunder James the son of Zebedee and John the brother of James to whom he gave the name Boanerges sons of thunder so they had a nature like thunder avaru zebedee's makkalana pakshe avare prakritham ennu paranjal idi idi makkalana which means they are maybe short tempered chalapam eduthiyal avare kovam bhayangaram aayirikum we don't know so the, the nature is like thunder and that is why he called them Boanerges or sons of thunder so the son of god has the divine nature or the nature of god come back to it and then he says who has eyes like a flame of fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze okay where do we see this reference eyes like flame of fire chapter 1 verse 14 revelation chapter 1 verse 14 the hairs of his head were white like white wool like snow his eyes were like a flame of fire what do we say Jesus chooses this description for himself when he is presenting uh, to Thyatira to emphasize the idea that his eyes are penetrating with judgment okay penetrating judgment aanu kartavinte kannalilla oru kaariyum kartavinte kannalil nu maranjirikkunnilla he sees everything and he judges everything correctly ennu parayanulla aanu okay so that is what his eyes like fire mean uh, so he is looking with penetrating eyes deep into their hearts അവരുടെ ഹാർട്ടിലുള്ള രഹസ്യങ്ങളെല്ലാം കർത്താവിൽ അറിയാമെന്നാണ് കാണിക്കുന്നത് ആൻഡ് ഹിസ് ഫീറ്റ് ലൈക്ക് ഫൈൻ ബ്രാസ് ഓർ ബ്രോൺസ് വാട്ട് ഇസ് ദിസ് ബ്രാസ് ഓർ ബ്രോൺസ് വി ടോൾ യു ഓൾറെഡി ദ കോസ്റ്റ്ലിയസ്റ്റ് മെറ്റൽ ദ സ്ട്രോങ്ങസ്റ്റ് മെറ്റൽ പ്യൂരിറ്റി ഇസ് ഹൈലി റിഫൈൻഡ് ബൈ ഫയർ ഓക്കെ വാട്ട് ഇസ് ഇറ്റ് ഷോ വെൻ കർത്താവിൻ്റെ കാലുകൾ ഇങ്ങനെയാണെന്ന് പറയുമ്പോൾ വാട്ട് ഇസ് ഇറ്റ് ഷോ യു ഹുസ് ഫീറ്റ് ആർ ലൈക്ക് ബോണിഷ് ബ്രോൺസ് വിച്ച് മീൻസ് ഹി ഇസ് സ്റ്റെഡ് ഫാസ്റ്റ് ഹി ഇസ് സോ സ്ട്രോങ് ഹി കനോട്ട് ബി മൂവ്ഡ് that is what it means in that passage okay he is an immovable he is immovably strong that is what it means okay so his feet are like burnished bronze means angane onnu elapathille mathrale etra buddhimuttiyalum kartavane maatya pettathilla he what he is firm on he is firm on it that is what it means so the idea is to emphasize both steadfastness and another quality is because it is tightera 
purity purity of bronze or brass purity okay so his purity is like burn uh, no it is burnished bronze so his purity is so refined it is highly refined that's what refined again and again by fire that's what burnished means then brass means steadfast immovably strong so pure and steadfast christ who is pure and steadfast is addressing you one who can see right through your heart one who is highly pure refined and who can see through you and who can judge you correctly who is immovable you can't change him and he is strong and immovable that is what he is addressing himself like okay aa kartavana nammode samsarikkunnana now let's look at what is the benefit or what is the good things that comes from thyatira first he says i know your works your love and faith and service and patient endurance and that your latter works exceed the first okay what a good thing that jesus says i know your works ningal pravrutti enik ariya thyatira was the least significant city among the seven cities addressed in the letters okay yet they are not insignificant to jesus jesus knows them and he knows their works okay their works are not hidden from christ so i know your works id kartavu ella sabodum parayunnaan in verse 2 chapter 2 verse 2 i know your works so so god who knows them he is the one who is among them he is the one who knows their works and what kind of works this tyatera have naal karyangalaan four essentials are listed there four essential qualities of their work what is that they work in love their work is signified by service and they are working out of faith and their work is signifying patience naal karyangal love service faith and patience love service faith and patience so so in many ways thyatira is a model church it's a model church four essential great qualities are there for this church they had love both for the lord and for one another they had love in their hearts they knew how to serve christ and they were doing it with diligence diligence means ottum amandikade innu cheyandathu innu cheyya naale cheyandathu naale cheyya angane correct aayittu work cheyina oru serve cheyina oru sabhayana avadu ullathu okay the most you can do is so. so out of love that work comes out of love so their service comes out of this love so first and primary is love and love decides how, what kind of work you turn out kartavana snehikunnengil adu pole nammal pravartikkum that is what it means so love and out of that comes the service then comes faith faith that trust in his word devu adu parnengil adu nadakkum devu parayatha karyangal onnum nadakkathilla ennulla poorna vishwasathodu kooda nammal pravartikkanam devu nammal anugrahikkum god will reward us aa ore arivodu kooda pravartikkum devu nammale kaanunu aa vishwasathodu kooda pravartikkum so they knew how to do service their service was full of faith and of course final is not not the least important right patience kartavan vendi endum sahikkanayittu endum neridanayittu avaru ready aayirunnu so so four essential qualities of a church was there in thyatira love service faith and patience love service faith and patience check our hearts as the church of jesus christ are we exercising these four essential qualities is there love for god and for others in our hearts are we serving god diligently are we having faith in our hearts as we serve him are we patient in our service are we patient in our service no that word comes again there patient endurance endurance means they are suffering persecution for their faith and they are enduring it avara avara sahikunnu kuttu vaakkal sahikunnu physical torture sahikunnu so they are people who are persecuted but they are patiently enduring it and god says this is a great great mark of a church i know your works works that come out of love service faith and patience
So we have to be like this. This is what God demands. Now, one more thing that he says here, and that your latter works exceed the first. See, abe ippo lado karne vasho to bolle la. Karne vasho nengke love onda erno service onda erno faith onda erno patience onda erno. But chhi vasham ningali naal essential qualities hi malarcha jang karan onda. You are growing. You are maturing in these things. Amazing, no? You are increasing in measure in love. You are increasing in measure in service. Quality of faith is increased. Your patient endurance has increased over the last few years. No wonder Christ is commending this church. What a great model this church is. In increasing measure, the last more than the first. How it is it uh, opposite? It is opposite. It is in contrast with another passage. What is that? To the church in Ephesus, verse four, chapter two, verse four. It says, "I have this against you that you have abandoned the love you had at first." See, remember from therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. See, our ko Mumbai under the love ko kudal ayar ni ippo the love ko koranjo veeri ke first love ko poi. That is Ephesus. Shivanga ne alla. They had first love. and now they have grown in that love so they have matured they have become increasing in their love service faith and patient endurance so, so comparing yourself with ephesus you are doing excellently well in that department so christ is commending them for these four essential things in which they are growing daily yearly when christ takes the kalak edukumbo these people have been growing year after year love service faith and patient endurance amazing now let's see what christ has against them it says here i have this against you that you tolerate that woman jezebel who called herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols so now it says here but i have in the in the Uh, in the king james version version it says nevertheless nevertheless despite all the good things jesus saw in that church there were significant problems so, it is good that you have these four essentials but then make sure you don't have this nevertheless that christ does not consider this against something gross so, and what is that i have a few things against you see there were significant problems problems were big enough for jesus to say nevertheless or but which means despite all the good things idella or side la undengilum mara side la prashnangal undu so endha alla vidatha prashnam you allow you tolerate that woman jezebel you tolerate that woman jezebel see the center of corruption in that church in thyatira was a woman Jesus calls her Jezebel. Now her name is not literally Jezebel, but that it's a title given to her, which represents, you know, that she is a type of the Old Testament Jezebel. पढ़े नहीं मतलब आहा बिंद भारी है तो हमलोग पढ़ी चुन रहे हैं कि ना First Kings लाना था, okay? First Kings chapter sixteen to twenty one. We'll find this reference of this lady. First Kings uh, chapter sixteen. to chapter 21 okay, you will find this lady jezebel if you want to read up on her that is your homework you okay, read all about jezebel yeah, and uh, you will be surprised about this woman the title that jesus chose for this lady in thyatira is jezebel now she was not a prophetess in the old testament she was the wife of a king king ahab in the bhari i don't know jezebel but here This woman is called Jezebel because she is a self-appointed prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. See, so the title is a type of you are a type of Jezebel. So, अब आ टाइटल आने करता है वो बड़े चूसे दे रही है ना हिंदू वाला ना आ Jezebel इस्राएल ने तेरी लेके नारत അതേപോലെ തന്നെ ഈ ജസബലും ഇന്ന് കർത്താവിന്റെ സഭയെ തയറ്ററയിലുള്ള സഭയിലെ പല ആൾക്കാരെയും തെറ്റിലേക്ക് നയിച്ചുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുകയാണ് ഷീസ് വൺ ഓഫ് ദ 
most evil characters that you will find in the old testament she combined the worship of israel with the worship of idol baal see apo adana avare track record jezebel track record nu parayna she she made israel worship baal and to forget jehova and to turn towards baal appo angane oru movement na kaaranamaya oru stree aanu jezebel adhe movement aanu this jezebel is causing in titera so she has a pattern which she is following she is following the pattern of the old testament jezebel okay now what about jezebel first of all i said it is not her literal name is like varanda peru unde but she jezebel is a type aan okay secondly you will find that most uh, it's like you know calling a person judas no nammal nee or judas alle ennu parayumbo അവൻ്റെ ആ ഒറ്റ കൊടുക്കുന്ന സ്വഭാവത്തെയാണ് നമ്മൾ പറയുന്നത് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ നീ ഒരു ഹിറ്റ്ലറാണ് എന്ന് പറയുകയാണെങ്കിൽ നമ്മൾ പറയാം ഓ അത്രയ്ക്കും ഈവിൾ ആയിട്ടുള്ളൊരു വ്യക്തി ഇൻഫ്ലുവൻഷ്യൽ ആയിട്ടുള്ളൊരു വ്യക്തി ഈവിൾ ആയിട്ടുള്ള വ്യക്തിയാണ് നമ്മൾ ഹിറ്റ്ലർ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ അതേപോലെ ദിസ് ടൈറ്റിൽ ജെസബിൽ ഇസ് ഗിവൻ ടു ഐഡൻറ്റിഫൈ ദ നേച്ചർ ഓഫ് ദിസ് പേഴ്സൺ ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് വാട്ട് ജീസസ് ഇസ് ഹൈലൈറ്റിംഗ് ദ സോ ദ പീപ്പിൾ ഇൻ തൈറ്റീറ റെക്കഗ്നൈസ് ഹർ ആസ് എ പ്രോഫറ്റ് and she is also a prophetess she is also claiming to be a prophetess sorry yeah all right now that you tolerate that woman just been who calls herself a prophet and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality okay now you had found we had found this lady in another church also you know uh sorry did you miss it no sorry uh teachings of balaam yeah so the other person who is compared to is another prophet called balaam and his uh ways okay balaam in the vali ennulla reethil uh randam adhyayam 14th chapter il parayunnathu those who follow after balaam the teachings of balaam and then another is mentioned about um the nicolaitans god hates the nicolaitans and their teachings but ide pole false teaching ullo or vyaktiyana jezebel okay now if you look at the old testament jezebel she was never uh, an adulterous woman okay she did not she was not unfaithful to her husband ahab and everybody parayunnilla but how did this idolatry idolatry and unfaithfulness adultery come to be associated with jezebel in varanu kanal see again that is a type adultery in the sense of god's worship being attributed to an idol is adultery see, idolatry is the adultery that god is talking about here okay i hope you get the picture okay it is not this woman was an adulterous woman it is not a literal adultery that she was committing she was ad- committing spiritual adultery സ്പിരിച്വൽ അഡൾട്ട് കർത്താവിന് ഡിസേർവിംഗ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ആരാധന മറ്റ് ഐഡൽസിന് കൊടുക്കുന്നതിനെയാണ് സ്പിരിച്വൽ ഐഡോൾട്രി എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് സ്പിരിച്വൽ അഡൾട്രി എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഓക്കെ സോ ഇൻ ദാറ്റ് വേ ഷി വാസ് എ അഡൾട്രസ് ഹു ടുക്ക് അവേ ദ ഫെയ്ത്ഫുൾ വേഷിപ്പ് ഓഫ് ഇസ്രായേലൈറ്റ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഡൈവേർട്ടഡ് ഇറ്റ് ടുവേർഡ്സ് എൻ ഐഡൽ കോൾഡ് ബാൽ ഓക്കെ സോ ഷി വാസ് നോട്ട് എ റിയൽ പ്രോഫിറ്റ് ഷി ഓൺലി ക്ലെയിം ടു ബി എ പ്രോഫിറ്റ് ഓക്കെ ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ വിളി എന്നുള്ള ഒരു പ്രോഫിറ്റസ് അല്ലായിരുന്നു ഓക്കെ നാം വാട്ട് ഇസ് ഐ ടോൾഡ് യു ബിഫോർ ഐ ഓൾസോ ബട്ട് ഐ വുഡ് ലൈക്ക് ടു എൻഫസൈസ് വാട്ട് ഇസ് ദ വേർഡ് പ്രോഫിറ്റ് ഇസ് ഐ മീൻ പ്രോഫിറ്റ് മീൻസ് എ സ്പോക്സ് മാൻ ഫോർ ഗോഡ് വൺ ഹു സ്പീക്സ് ദ ഹാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ഗോഡ് ടു ദ പീപ്പിൾ ഇസ് കോൾഡ് എ പ്രോഫിറ്റ് നാം എ പ്രോഫിറ്റ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് ഓൺലി അസോസിയേറ്റഡ് വിത്ത് സ്പീക്കിംഗ് അബൌട്ട് ഫ്യൂച്ചർ സ്പീക്കിംഗ് അബൌട്ട് ദ പാസ്റ്റ് സ്പീക്കിംഗ് അബൌട്ട് ദ പ്രസൻറ്റ് ആൻഡ് സ്പീക്കിംഗ് അബൌട്ട് ദ ഫ്യൂച്ചർ ഇസ് ഇൻക്ലൂഡഡ് ഇൻ ബീങ് എ പ്രോഫിറ്റ് ഓക്കെ so this lady we don't know what kind of a prophet as she was but she was definitely not god's prophet she was not speaking the heart of god she was speaking her own heart okay and she was called a prophetess by the people in thyatira or she herself called her herself a prophet but she was not a prophetess of god she was not really a prophet okay so there are many christians today who receive people as prophets and prophetesses and that is why jesus is also giving us this warning 
No, do not give them prophetess and prophetesses titles when their prophecies fail or if they if they are not speaking according to scripture discern the spirits test them no, people are scared to talk about prop people are scared to question a prophet or a prophetess who claims to be a prophet or a prophetess we don't have to be scared of them they are people just like us so we have to be testing what spirit they are speaking of if their prophecies do not come true verbatim they are false one prophecy one wrong prophecy can label them as false prophets and prophetesses so we have to be very very adamant on that this is how god's word treats a prophet or prophet isaiah never spoke a word that failed the book of samuel says when samuel said none of his words fell to the ground which means not a single false prophecy these are the prophets of god you check throughout the word of god not a single prophet's words fell to the ground which means it did not happen it everything happened according to what they said that proved that they were the prophets of the living god so now why did jesus warn them and us i will tell you matthew chapter 24 matthew chapter 24 and verse 11 Matthew chapter 24 and verse 11 And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray See? Says in the last days these things will happen last days began when Jesus came to the world by the way So from that time till now Jesus says more and more prophets are going to come and they are going to be false prophets Be careful and they are going to lead many 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 people astray they are going to deceive many they are going to come from among us and they are going to deceive us if they come from outside and they say some false god we would not worship see they come from within and try to present a jesus who is not really jesus and people fall for that they are deceived see? so when jesus spoke those words he was speaking about the end times there will be those who call themselves prophets in the church but are not So, now what does jesus have to say about her he calls as a prophet and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols see so he's specifying sin here this woman jezebel is teaching and seducing see so she is a teacher see she's teaching from so called word of god she is teaching from her understanding of the word of god and what is she teaching she is teaching to mislead people to practice sexual immorality see i told you in those days there was this uh, worship of caesar was happening and worship of all kinds of you know immoral practice worship which was included with all kinds of immoral practices you know and ungodly influences were being put on the people and this kind of system was followed food sacrifice to idols so she would be teaching like there's no problem with all this there's no problem you can you can actually indulge in all these sexual sins so you can you can partake of their worship and be a part of christian worship also you don't have to be separated from those people you can be well with the pagan you can be compromising with the pagans just like how pergamum was you see so she was an immoral and ungodly influence on the people of that the church in that era she led others to sin now understand that her influence is what christ is mentioning here her teaching ability is what christ is condemning here then what happens i gave her time to repent see even to her god is showing grace devam kripa anikiran saying i am waiting for her to change now what is the change that god wants not from being a false prophet to a sh- true prophetess no the very fact that she is unsaved means god is giving her chance to repent she was corrupting the followers of jesus the servants of jesus they belong to him so that is why he says my servants she seducing my servants and now jesus saying 
I'm giving her time to repent. So look at the grace that has been extended to the sinner. Christ is patiently giving her time to repent. And what is the final st stage of that? Behold, I will throw her onto a sick bed. She has to stop this adultery, this sexual immorality, compromising with the pagan religion. She has to stop that. She has to become a Christian. She has to repent of her sins. See? Otherwise, I am going to put her on a deathbed. Okay? Now, sexual immorality has to do with the, the unclean bed or the compromising bed. But here Christ is putting her on a sick bed. It's like a it's like a play of words. Okay. So Christ is going to put her on a bed of illness. That is what he mentions there. He says, I will uh, I will throw her onto a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her I will throw into great tribulation. See. So this shows how terrible the sin of Jezebel was. So Christ is giving her time to repent. And if she does not repent, he is going to do something, something horrible to her. Okay. Judgment of God is going to fall upon her. Now, this is not an unlimited time that God has extended. It's a limited time. Okay. So it tells you about judgment that comes after a definite time. Now, time to repent shows mercy. But if she did not repent, God will deal with us the same way how she, how God dealt with this lady. Okay, So it is not an unlimited time of repentance that God gives. God's patience runs out. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3 says, My spirit will not strive with man forever. My spirit shall not strive with man forever. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. I will not contend with man. I will not show patience forever. That's what God means. God gives us a time to repent. Take advantage of that time. That's what it means. Okay. Now, I gave her time to repent, but she refused to repent of her sexual immorality. Behold, I will throw her into a sick bed. And those who commit adultery with her, I will throw into great tribulation unless they repent of her works. See, they have to repent of her works. Who are they? Those who commit adultery with her. See, God has been extending his grace, his mercy to even those people who are compromising along with her. So now, they have to repent of her works. Now, they also have to repent. Individually, everyone has to repent. Because God is extending his mercy to them. And I will try now. What is coming? Prepare, uh, uh, and I will throw into great tribulation. Okay. This is not the specific tribulation that comes later on. It can include that. But what is specifically said about here is I am going to put tribulation for her. Okay. I am going to put tribulation for her. Okay. I am going to make sure that this is not going to be easy for her. Okay, so God is going to put her through a lot of trouble because of what she is she is doing right now. Now, then it continues. I will strike her children dead. Now, these are not literally her children. These are people who are following her. her children See, so somebody said, no, all men die. But are not all are not killed by death. But here what God says is that I will strike them dead forever. They'll be removed from the earth and eternally also they will remain dead. If I am I'm extending you mercy and you don't repent, this is your final end. You will die forever. I will strike her children dead. And all the churches will know that I am he who searches mind and heart. You see? The fiery eyes that Christ was saying in the beginning. I am he who knows and who searches mind and heart. Actual translation would be kidney and heart. Okay, the guts and the heart. Anathakalata, guts right? Uh, they thought that was a seat of all decision making. So mind and heart. 
and I will give each of you according to your works. I will give each of you according to your works. See? So many were compromising and to them Jesus is saying, if you follow Jezebel, then you are going to end up like Jezebel. If you are going to end up like her, understand that I will show no mercy. I will show no mercy there. When judgment comes, I'm not going to show you mercy. I will strike them all dead. And who is speaking? I am the one who sees through the hearts. See? I will give to each of you according to your words. See? Just like how salvation is individual, judgment is also personal. It is individual. And according to what you have done and I have done, each one of us will receive accordingly. That is a good thing. We are not punished for the sins of others. We are punished for our own sins. Because of our own lack of repentance, we are punished ourselves. But according to your works. So, what is the contentment that is given there? Contention that is given there is, but to the rest of you in Thyatira, who do not hold this teaching, who have known, not learned what some call the deep things of Satan to you, I say, I do not lay on you any other burden. See? So, here is another statement being made. Deep things of Satan. See? Deep things of Satan and the Kartava Avare Kurucha Parandana. The Avare Vadapikinana, deep things of God. See? And Christ calls it deep things of Satan. See? Because their source is Satan. So, what is he? He is equalizing all foreign gods. All idolatry with Worship of Satan. The source behind them is all Satan. Why? Because there is no other God. And if you are being deceived into worshipping other gods, that means you are worshipping Satan. That's what it means. Okay? So the source is Satan. He wants people to know the deeper things about him. But there is nothing deeper over there. See? There is nothing deeper over there. The, the, the truth is that it all belongs to Satan. And he is deceiving them into thinking that they are, they are studying deep things. There are no deep things there. They might be saying deep things of God, but it's being deceived. So, there is another instance where Jesus says about the uh, synagogue of Satan. So, synagogue of Satan. But that is also, it is a synagogue there. They don't claim to be synagogue of Satan. They claim to be synagogue of God, but actually it is a synagogue of Satan. That's what Jesus means. So, same way, here they are teaching deep things of God. All are a profound atlas of Tamil. Marmangal, Yakartav in the Marmangal, Naparan Vadipikan, Vashento Vadipikin, Pishaj in the Hatangal and Vadipikin. That is what he means. Deep things of Satan. To you I say, I do not lay you lay on you. He is commending those who don't follow that way. See, he is commending those who don't follow that way. And he is saying, hold on, hold on. I am not going to give you any more burden. Why? Because you are having these four essential qualities and you have not compromised with this person. See? But the rest of you who do not hold on to you who have not learned what some, uh, some call to you say, I don't lay on you. Only hold fast what you have until I come. Hold fast what you have. See, there were many faithful, uncompromising Christians in Titan. Then Jesus is simply saying, hold fast. Don't stop doing what is good. Don't get distracted. Don't get discouraged. Jesus wants them to be and to do. To be strong. And to hold on. See? How long to hold on? Till I come. We have to hold on fast. That is how long you have to stand. See? Hang in there. Stand strong for Jesus until he comes. Only then the battle will be over. See? Don't let your guard down. There are people on your left and people on your right who are compromising. And Jesus says, you hold on till I come. What is the promise of the reward? The one who conquers and who keeps my works until the end to him I will give authority over the nations. See? To him who overcomes. So again the reward is individual. See? And the individual reward, even when there is the immoral and adulterous influence of Jezebel, you as Christians, you can overcome and keep Jesus' works till the end. We must not become discouraged at the immorality that is happening around us about the idolatry that's happening around us. See, God's work will still go on through whom? Through his overcomers. 
He keeps my works till the end. The one who conquers and who keeps my works until the end. See, his work will continue through you and me till the end. To him, I will give power over the nations. See, which means you will reign. Kartavane kordtiri kinnna identity in Varanal, he is going to rule over all nations. That is the privilege that Christ has. And the same privilege is going to be promised to me in this passage. See? So if you are an overcomer, God says you will reign with me. See? God has still got work to do among, among his people here in the city. And those whom he uses are the overcomers. Okay? Overcomers. And you and I must be in that minority. Okay, not the majority. The majority of the people will be following Jezebel. Minority will be following and holding on till he comes. The one who conquers and who keeps my work until to him I will give authority over the nations. And he will root them with a rod of iron as when earthen pots are broken in pieces. He shall rule them. See, So this, this quotation is from Psalm 2. It speaks of the authority of the Messiah as he rules over the earth. Adhavasam. Sarva Nannavadu Gude, Sarva Righteousness Gude Kartava ruling. See, his, his will will be enforced on the earth. Those who rebel against Jesus will be dashed to pieces like clay pots. Iron bar le vandhu clay pots idikindha vole chadhanyi podinji vole. And that's how Jesus is going to implement his rule. But Yeshi Kartava Nannavadu Nema Gude Ishtra Padatha Alkar Kau Illya Prayasu Erikindha Gude. But it is giving hope for the Christians of Thyatira. See. If you are feeling that immorality and adultery are overwhelming you, it is conquering you, hold on, Jesus says, you are on my winning team. You are on my winning team. Now, says he will rule them. That word rule originally comes from the word shepherd. The word that is used in Revelation is actually shepherd. I will shepherd them with an iron rod. See, So it is not only to implement or execute judgment. It is to administer mercy and direction as a shepherd. So, the iron rod on the angle, the iron rod which he uses to shepherd them. Okay. For the one who has to be dashed, it is an iron rod which will crush them, which will powder them like clay pots. But to them who has who, who he has to show gentleness, to him he has to show mercy and direction, he will use that rod lightly. That is what means shepherding with an iron rod. Then he says, I will give him the morning star. I myself have received authority from my father, and I will give him the morning star. What does it mean by morning star? See, uh, Jesus is offering them a reward. It is greater than kingdoms it is greater than worlds what is that his reward is himself the morning star refers to christ himself revelation chapter 22 revelation chapter 22 verse 16 i jesus have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches i am the root and the descendant of david the bright morning star i am i am your great reward you see i am your great reward and this reward is greater than kingdoms it is greater than planets. It's greater than anything you have known. It is me, myself. I will give myself to you. A reward greater than a kingdom. And the final verse, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is a letter that applies to everyone. No, It applies to those who are like Jezebel, who leads other people to sin. It applies to those who follow teachings of prophets and prophetesses like Jezebel and who are led into sin by others. This applies to them. It applies to those who permit a Jezebel to control their lives, their destiny. See? And it also applies to those who are faithful and who must hold fast, hold strong to what you have been led to. Let him who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. As we look to these words, let us look to our hearts and let's say, Lord, where am I in this? Am I 
teaching wrong? Am I leading other people into sin? Am I being influenced by some kind of wrong teaching? Am I being controlled by prophets and prophetesses? Or am I being controlled by the true word of God? Am I following other people into sin? Am I following wickedness? Am I justifying my sin? Or am I the faithful whom God calls to hold strong? Let me check my heart this evening. Will God speak to our hearts this evening through these words? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, the letter to the church in Thyatira, a place that is thriving in business, a church that is thriving in all kinds of purple, and to the mighty God who is the royalty here. He listens, he sees, he understands what is going on actually in our hearts. Am I allowing myself to be wrongly influenced by some other person, some other teaching, which is contrary to what is God's will in the scriptures, in the revealed scriptures? Help me, O oh Lord, to check my own life, that I would not be like the children of Jezebel, followers of Jezebel. Help me to be careful how I obey the word of God, how I hold on to these four essentials that this church was practicing to the love and the service and the faith and the patience with which this church was moving forward, growing every day. Help me also to be like that. In this generation, help me to be in that minority which seeks after you, which keeps on holding on till the day you come. I give you praise and glory in Jesus' name.